Welcome back, dear readers. The season of corporate reports in the United States is at a full swing. The economic calendar contains some macroeconomic data, such as the US preliminary GDP for the third quarter and personal spending. Catalysts for market sentiment on a Monday are geopolitical jitters in the Middle East and the high yields of the US treasuries. With the more corporate reports due this week, roughly 30% of companies in the S&P 500 will have already reported on their day earnings. Investors are alert to reports by industrial giants General Electric and Boeing, as well as the car manufacturers General Motors and Ford. This will be memorable in terms of a corporate reports because the stock market will get to know records of the G7 companies. On Tuesday, Microsoft and Alphabet are on investors' radars. Meta is due to report on its earnings on Wednesday. Amazon will provide its report on Thursday. Interestingly, these high-tech giants alongside Apple, Nvidia and Tesla have ensured an 11% gain in the S&P 500 since the beginning of the year. So, any disappointing information on the day quarterly results could pose a challenge to investors. Market sentiment is turning sore due to the hawkish agenda of the Federal Reserve, and the Fed chairman signaled last week that the healthy domestic economy could require the central bank to maintain interest rates higher for longer. At the same time, Jerome Powell pointed out that the regulator was not going to raise interest rates immediately. Later on, Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said that the central bank would hardly begin cutting interest rates until mid-2024. Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker noted that he would vote for keeping monetary policy setting without any revision. To sum up these comments by Fed policymakers, added uncertainty. And today, yields of the US Treasuries briefly spiked to 5% the high level and since, since 2007. And this also dented confidence among Wall Street investors. Rising Treasury yields serve as a barometer. When the Federal Reserve sticks to high interest rates, this is bearish for Wall Street indexes. Last Friday, the S&P 500 tumbled by 2.4% and completed its worst week for three years. On a Monday, the broad profile index of Wall Street opened a new trading week in the red at 4,190 points. Though the S&P 500 is still staying above the key support at 4,050 points, most technical indicators signal a bearish short-term outlook. Today, the S&P 500 isn't under selling pressure for a few reasons such as the corporate profits, volatile commodity prices, escalating geopolitical tensions and expectations of the Fed's hawkish policy moves. Exactly the same factor could have benefited the US dollar strands today. In practice, the greenbacks trading in the New York pre-market does not look like a confidence at once. On the contrary, the trading range between 106 points and 106 and 30 today looks unstable, where the index is moving with a downward bias. The US dollar index slipped to 106 and 10 before the opening bell, and the culprit of the US dollar's weakness today is the euro's growth. Interestingly, despite steady demand for the safe haven assets, the US dollar index closed last week with losses. Moreover, the index has been trading mainly sideways in October, and the index opened on October 2 at about 106.06. And this is exactly the level where it's trading today, on October 23.
The Canadian dollar is taking advantage of the temporary weakness in its American counterpart. The loonie gained ground in the New York pre-market. The USD card pair is now trading in the intraday Canada between 1.3692 and 1.3737. The instrument tested the support at the round level of 1.3700 and rebounded to 1.3727. The thing is that the commodity reliant loonie was hurt by a decline in the oil prices today. Western Texas Intermediate has been trading lower for the second day in a row, and this undermines the forex rate of the Canadian dollar. The USD CAD pair is pushed up by the prospects of another rate hike in the United States, and the Bank of Canada is holding its policy meeting on October 25. Earlier than the U.S. Fed, inflationary pressure is ebbing away in the Canadian economy. It means that the regulator is likely to maintain the status quo on the interest rates until the year end. In other words, the Canadian dollar will lack support from the central bank. Meanwhile, the crypto market is surprising investors. Bitcoin closed last week above. 30,000 for the first time in a few months. And the flagship crypto is opening on a Monday, consolidating its gains in the Canada between 29,710 and 31,006 points. Bitcoin has rebounded to the key resistance for the third time in the last six months. The token has appreciated by 10% since mid-June. What's next? Will the number one crypto be able to surpass $31,800, the highest mark of 2023? A further scenario will depend on the approval of Bitcoin spot ETFs by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Analysts at the JP Morgan foresee a 90% chance that it will happen in early January. Besides, experts at Morgan Stanley predict that the crypto winter is coming to an end soon. Still, experts from both banks warn that potential risks might cancel any forecast. One of the key conditions for the prosperity in the crypto industry is the high liquidity, for a while it does not match the high value of a flat money. In addition, the United States proposed to equating Bitcoin mixers to financial laundering schemes. This form of sanctions will require special reporting for any monetary transactions and, of course, will have a negative impact on the cryptocurrency market quotes. We hope that our video reviews help you recognize reasonable market entry points. Welcome to leave your comments and any feedback. Thank you for watching and good luck in your trading. See you online tomorrow.